Welcome back to this old trailer. Today we're taking a look at the RV lock set, how to fix a couple of problems, and I just did a video on a, a major security concern with uh, the handle tumbler on these. Make sure you check out the video to make sure your RV is secure. Uh, this video we're actually going to cover uh, taking the lock apart and fixing it. This one's got an issue um, where this handle gets stuck after being opened once, um, and it actually locks you out if you if you don't come in do that to open the inside, um, if it locks when the handle's open, you're locked out. And uh, I learned that the hard way. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take this apart. You got an issue where um, as soon as you open your handle, it gets stuck and then you can't actuate it at all uh, unless you reset it like that. That's the issue we're going to address today. And I'll also show you what the tumblers look like on the inside there. So let me put this in the tripod. Pretty uh, pretty high angle, so I'll have to excuse the, the bad angle there, but uh, my RV sits pretty high, and this is about as good as I can get it right there. So bear with me. So they're pretty simple, just like a house lock set. And they're basically held in with Phillips screws. You got four on the inside there. Nothing fancy there. This is what the inside looks like. You just got your handle with a little lever latch there, and you got your deadbolt, keyed deadbolt handle which turns the deadbolt knob there. Then you got two more screws here. They hold in the actual strike plate latch thing. Like so. And once you have uh, all six screws undone, lock will just pull out. There's some double-sided weather stripping. Uh, if that sticks, just take a, a putty knife or b even a butter knife and just uh, gently go around the outside. Uh, when you put it back on, you can actually put a small bead of silicone sealant on there, or you can put new double-sided weather strip tape in there if you want. Um, let me move the camera so I can get a better angle here. So when I took this apart, a little piece actually fell out, and it turns out that the little piece was part of, uh, I can't really see it too well in there. Because this is like a cast, uh, cast aluminum, um, sometimes cast aluminum can be brittle. And there's a, basically the same thing on the other side of the lock. You got this little latch thing. You got the same thing on the other side of this handle here. And unfortunately they put these together with rivets. So they you can't just like unscrew it, take it apart and you know, replace that one piece. Um, you could drill out the rivets and replace them with screws or bolts. You would be just fine. Um, but let me show you uh, what the piece looks like. That's a little piece of broken cast aluminum. Get it to focus on me there. There we go. Yeah, that stuff is kind of brittle and it cracks easy, but it's basically the part on the other side of this that is met by the handle latch on the receiving side. And so, the solution I came up with is to just screw a tiny little piece of metal. I found this. It's basically a, I don't know what that came out of, but you can use any, any straight piece of metal. You might have to take a Dremel tool or a grinder and grind it down to the right size so that it fits. 
in that space right there. Uh, but this just happens to work really well even with that bevel on the other side. And the way it's going to sit is just like this. It's going to sit on there like that. And it actually, the beveled part actually catches the, the handle on the inside there. You can kind of see it there. Kind of see it hitting the hitting the bottom of the bevel there, and basically where that where that's hitting right there, that's where that little piece of broken off aluminum was, and so that broke off and rendered the door pretty much useless unless it's opened and reset from the inside. So I'm I'm just gonna take a small drill bit, I'm gonna drill a pilot hole through there, and then I'm gonna uh, drill a little bevel in that piece of metal and put a. Uh, beveled head screw in there. So let me pause it while I get that set up. All right, we're ready to do this. I've got a 3 30 seconds drill bit, and I've got a little beveled head screw here that is just barely wider than uh, the drill bit. You don't want it to be too tight, you just want enough that the threads can grab. Um, basically, all this is going to do is hold that little metal piece in place. Let me see if I can do this and get it on camera at the same time. So what I'm going to do is hold, hold this down and start the screw drill bit there. That out as far as possible. It slipped. If you didn't want to mess with that, you could probably just glue it, but I want this to last. I like my fixes to last. Now that I've started it, I'll go ahead and pull out the little piece. And you can see the little hole started there. And it's kind of hard because it is at uh, just slightly under flush. So I gotta get the drill in there as straight as possible. So we'll see what we can do here. You guys can see it, huh? And my battery's down on me. We'll get a new battery. Alright. You can just replace this whole latch with a new keyed latch. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below. 
So you can do that if you want. Some people don't like to uh, go through all this hassle and they'd rather just uh, replace it. And that's a, a perfectly feasible and affordable solution as well. Now we have our hole right there. And we'll just test fit our screw here. And it, it's, it's about the right size. Alright, so the next thing we want to do is actually put a bevel in this so that the screw will go down and actually inset more into the head because this side this side of the latch where it's going to sit is actually where the inner handle pushes against so we want that to be uh, nice and flat and solid so what we're going to do is just take a drill bit that's just slightly bigger than that and about the same size as the the head itself a little bit bigger like uh, 7 30 seconds there That should do a pretty good job. Alright, so on mine, you could just use a flat piece of metal. I'm using a beveled one because that's going to rub against the, the latch there. It actually works pretty well with that little bevel in there, so I'm going to leave that bevel. You could just do a straight piece of plastic, uh, metal because the original piece the original piece that broke off was just a straight edge. So um, a straight piece would work just fine for that straight edge. So we're going to want to drill the outside like that. And you need to be careful, you don't want to go too far. <laughs> that could be really easy to drill straight through. Just keep test fitting it, do a little bit at a time. Closer.
Actually, I'm going to go up a step. 1564s. Get in there. That's pretty good right there. You don't want to weaken the metal too much. Otherwise it'll just go really weak. Let's go with a little bit more. That'll serve my purposes right there. Alright. Now I could go ahead and uh, take a tap and try to trap and tap that. I'm just gonna uh, use a long thin screwdriver. Alright, so I got my screwdriver. Just a standard long, small tipped screwdriver. I'm going to start without the piece of metal in there, so it'll be easier to uh, get started. Let's go ahead and screw it down in there, get the thread started. If you have to keep uh, going in and out, screw it in, screw it out, you can do that. But you don't want to break this part either. You break this part, you're screwed. So I'll keep gently going in and out. There we have it pretty much all the way in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew it. I'm going to bevel the inside of that hole a little bit just to make sure we're getting the screw all the way down in there. So I'll take the same 7.30 seconds, just give it a quick, just a slight bevel. That'll make sure that the part that goes past the little piece of metal will seat down in there just fine. So now, we've got this, we've got that. Should take some uh, carb or brake cleaner and spray out all that, use a vacuum, a brush, you want to get all those little metal filings out of there. 
I took it outside with some carb cleaner or brake cleaner and I just sprayed all that out and blew out all the little metal filings, get it as clean as I could. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some heavy duty silicone. Uh, heavy duty silicone is a dry silicone. Um, it basically dries kind of dry. Um, it doesn't leave a sticky residue like uh, WD-40 PB blaster, they leave a, like a sticky residue and that actually kind of hardens and sets over time whereas heavy duty silicone just puts a slippery layer over everything and then it just kind of um, dries. Um, you could also use like a um, like a white lithium grease spray um, but I'm going to just use some white lithium grease. Um, I'm going to use a spray, silicone spray just to coat everything all inside there and make it nice and slick and lube and then I'm going to put the heavy duty uh, white silicone, white lithium grease on there. So with this, I'm just going to spray it in there. Feel free to get it, get it all in there. Because it, it dries pretty dry, it's not going to be uh, like spraying WD-40, which eventually gets sticky. So, everything all on the internals there that you can't get to the, from the outside, get them all nice and lubed up. Include the tumbler here. see where the, the tumbler actually actuates that slide down there. That's a really important part. Alright, now we'll take some actual grease. You could use any kind of molly, any kind of, uh, you know, even like a straight uh, paste actual grease will work on this. Uh, but uh, white lithium grease is pretty clean and, and uh, pretty good all around lubricant. You can get spray as well. And we're just going to put a dab in there, and then we'll get it down down to where the, the internal latch is. Get that all in there. You don't want to go too crazy, but you want to, you want a little bit of extra in there. So these are the parts that wear and, and need to slide against each other all the time. You want to get the in, inside that latch down there. You want a good coating on that. I'm just gonna take a dab, stick it down on that little latch. There we go. Yeah. We'll wipe up the excess when we're done here. We'll do the same down here where the deadbolt is. You see that slide down there? A nice good coating on that. Just work that in. Take a clean paper towel and just wipe off all the excess.
This one actually has a grease pocket down in there. Just wipe all that extra grease off. All right, now let's put our piece in. You go ahead and push the deadbolt in, push the latch in. Take my piece, put it in there. This is where you guys can actually see it, huh? So it's pretty much bottomed out right there. That's where it wants to be, right there. It's pretty, pretty plush. The only concern there is that uh, this piece here slides against the head of that screw now. So we need to make sure that that's gonna, that's gonna fly. So that's the way it sits. Looks like it's gonna work to me, let's give it a try. All right, I'm just gonna slide this back in from the back if you want to. Uh, put a, bee, a small bead of silicone around that weather stripping to reseal it. Um, if your weather stripping still looks like it's in decent shape, you can go ahead and just put it back together. Um, but make sure it works right before you uh, do your final silicone on there. And it's just going to slide in from the back like so. You can take your strike plate. And uh, mine goes with the thin side on the inside. Take your screws. It's pretty windy today. To do this part, you need to make sure you line up the key deadbolt lock and this. You need to make sure that the outer handle is closed and that this uh, this inner latch right here lines up with the uh, actually right where that screw is on the inside. So first thing we're going to do is get our key deadbolt in place. Like so, and then we're going to make sure that our inner handle goes over that screw, like so. And I'll just start these by hand the first time.
All right, get, get a couple of the screws a little tight and just make sure everything, everything works the way you want it and then you can tighten it up the rest of the way. Looks good. Check it out one more time. Now it's a little snug. So loosen it up just a smidge. There we go. That's what we want to see right there. Now we should be able to close it without uh, locking ourselves out. Looks good. Good as new, and that should last a good while. If you want to just buy a whole new lock set, I'll put a link down in the description below. Um, if you use my link, I get a small, small credit with Amazon. So go ahead and use that link below. Looks good. All right, next video is going to cover uh, this next problem. If you close your door and the screen door stays closed, um, we got a, an adjustment we need to do there and possibly new weather stripping to keep that from sticking. Uh, that's supposed to come out with the door and the screen door is only supposed to stay if you tell it to stay, whereas over time they usually end up sticking like that. So be sure to check